that's much better. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And as you saw from the opening clip, today's effect has a certain ring to it. Thanks to this and about 30 other requests. Jaden MC3 asked, can you do the effect where the reverse flash shoots his suit out of the ring and quickly puts it on? Thanks and keep up the good work. Smiley face. I can and I will, Jaden. And a big thanks to everyone who put in a request for this effect. Now in order to complete it, you're gonna need to shoot your actor holding up a ring and then walk off frame in a running sort of motion. We'll then have them change into the costume, or in my case, a t-shirt, only this time they're going to stop before going off frame around about here, hold still for a second, and then move out of frame once more. We'll also grab the download pack below that contains our lightning assets and we're ready to go. To After Effects! Okay guys, here we are and let's get into it. As you can see, I have two comps set up and ready to go. One being our actor holding up the ring for around two seconds. And if we move to the end, I've ended the cut with them almost moving out of frame. The other comp over here is with our actor in the new outfit, or in my case, a new shirt, at the same point. And then I've just got them moving out of frame. As you can see in this comp, it starts with our actor standing still for around one to two frames before moving off screen. Now the reason for holding still is so we can get a nice sharp image of that shirt as we're going to mask it out to jump out of our ring. So our first step is to add our speed ramp to our initial comp. To do this, it's no different from our flash running comp episode. All we have to do in this instance is head to the point where our actor begins to lower their arm, right here. We'll then hit Control Shift D and split the clip. From there, we'll select that end portion, right click, head to time and select time stretch. I'll then put in a value of say eight. Next, let's head over to presets, type force and add CC force motion blur to that clip. I'll then crank the samples up to 255 and change the shutter angle to 155. Guys, feel free and play around with these settings to find your sweet spot according to your shot. If we check out a preview, you can see this shot is starting to take shape. So let's abandon it for now and work on the other one. Okie dokie, so our first step in this comp is to grab a still of our shirt here to jump out of the ring. To do this, let's head up, grab the pen tool and draw a really detailed mask all the way around that shirt until we end up with something like this. We'll then feather it out around 7 pixels or so. But there's a problem, we can't see inside the shirt at the back, so it kind of looks like we just masked it out. Since we did, that's okay, but let's fix it really easy. We'll head up to layer and add a new solid. Let's make it the same color as our collar here. We'll then drop it below our masked shirt, grab the pen tool and draw a mask in roughly the same shape as the collar of our shirt. Once you get to the end of the collar, just finish it off roughly like so. We'll then hit F and feather it out around 2.5 pixels. Next, we'll duplicate that solid, select the top one, head up to layer, solid settings and we'll change the color to a darker red. Let's then hit P, move its position down a little to form a color type shape. We'll then hit F and crank that feather up to around 20 pixels. As you can see, we now have the inside of our shirt all filled in. I told you it was quick and easy. Our last step with the shirt is removing the matte line around it to clean it up a bit. Let's head over to presets and type choker. We'll then drag and drop matte choker on our shirt layer. I'm going to crank up the choke one amount to 127, but by all means, do what works for your individual shot. As you can see, no more dark lines. Now that we have that shirt done, let's save that bad boy as a Photoshop file by heading up to Composition, Save Frame As, File, and then we'll render out a still. I'm gonna name mine Shirt. Once it's rendered, we'll import that still back into our project. Now, let's move on, shall we? Our next step is to add some lightning trails to our flash clip. So let's start by turning that mask off so the rest of our clip shows up. That's better. Now I've added a lightning layer to the download pack called Strike, so all we're going to do here is add that strike layer one at a time and animate the origin and direction until our flash is completely off screen. I ended up adding four of these lightning layers to the shot. I'm not going to cover animating and lightning in this episode since I've already got two episodes you can check out below covering lightning animation. And I know you guys just want to get to the good stuff and get to that ring suit effect. I've also added a camera shake effect at the end I also covered in the previous flash running episode. So our last step before we start on that is to head back to our original comp, head over to the project menu, hold shift and drop our newly lightninged comp in at the end. 
We'll then speed it up the exact same way as we did before. Right click the clip, head up to time, time stretch, and give it a value of eight. And then, just like with our previous sped up clip, we're gonna head over to presets, type force, and drop CC force motion blur on this one. I'm gonna leave it on its default settings this time as it seems like it's enough. If we check out a preview, you can see they transition pretty well together. Now, onto what you're tuned in for. Let's grab that shirt still and drop it into our comp. Let's then head four frames in and trim it up to there. We'll then scrub forward to when our flash clip begins, hit Control Shift D and delete the excess. From there, let's right click and hit Pre-Compose. We'll call it Shirt and hit OK. Next, it's time to shrink that shirt down. To do this, let's select the shirt layer, head to Effect, Distort and add Liquify. This is pretty simple here guys. Increase your brush size to around 300 and just go nuts. You can use any tool you like to distort the shirt to make it seem all crumpled and squished. As you can see, I've pushed it in at the sides, I've used the twist option on the corners, used the pucker tool in a few places, you can really just do whatever you want. The end result should look a bit like this. Not great, but wait for it. Let's make sure we're on our first frame, hit the stopwatch on distortion percentage and crank it up to 200%. We'll then head to the end frame and lower it to zero. Now that looks okay, but it's not totally what we want. So here's the kicker. All we're gonna do is duplicate that liquify, and if we check out a preview, looks much better now, huh? To finish this part off, all we have to do is add a few lightning layers into the mix. So let's grab our pre-animated lightning layer from our download pack. I'm gonna grab the one marked Surge 1, and basically, all we need to do is animate the scale. So let's head to the first frame of our shirt animation. You may wanna drop the quality level since liquify really saps your rendering speed. We'll then hit S and scale it down until it fits our shirt. Around 27% works for me because, you know, I custom made these lightnings for this shot. We'll then hit the stopwatch and, of course, move it into position. That looks pretty good. We'll then head to the end frame and crank it back up to 100. Now you may have to adjust the origin and direction frame by frame to suit your shot, but by now you'll be a pro at animating lightning layers. We'll then rinse and repeat this process with Surge 2. And finally, we'll add the final two layers called Bouncy 1 and Bouncy 2. Essentially, these two layers just dance around all over the place randomly and add a bit of chaos to your shot. Once we've animated the scale on both of these, just like the other layers, let's change things up and put Bouncy 1 below the shirt layer. That way, it looks like we have some energy pushing that shirt out of our ring. If you want to brighten up any of these lightning layers, simply duplicate them. That's what I'm gonna do. The end result of your work looks like this. So now our shirt's done, let's head back to our original comp and finish this shot off. Okay, we're back in our original comp and our shirt is all animated. The only problem is, it's not coming out of the ring. So here's how we fix that. Let's hit P to bring up our position controls, head to the point where our shirt's all full size and let's hit the stopwatch. Let's then head to the first frame of our shirt animation right here and then simply shift it into place on top of the ring. Done. We'll also click the collapse transformation thing right here. Looks like a little sun. All this does is recognize the transfer modes we've used on our previous layers. So you notice our lightning shows up a lot brighter and it glows the way we originally intended. Now guys, all the hard stuff's out of the way. Time to finish this shot off. For starters, let's add the ring glowing red. Let's head down to our original footage. Right down the bottom here, select it, then head up to Effect, Generate and add CC Light Rays. Let's grab the center point and put it right on our ring. In my case, it's really just my wedding ring. Let's change the radius to 16, uncheck color from source, and then we'll grab the color picker here and change it to a red. Now we need a little energy burst to show the ring is shooting that suit out. In order to do that, let's head up to layer and add a new adjustment layer. We'll stay up there and grab yet another CC Light Rays. Let's center it once more on that ring area. This time let's crank that intensity down to zero, hit the stopwatch, change the radius to 40, and the shape to square. We'll then skip forward to save frame five, crank that intensity up to 100, skip ahead one more frame, crank it up to 200, and then we'll move forward two to three frames more, and then crank it back down to zero. Our final step here is merely a cherry on top, guys. 
When the shirt comes out, it becomes our focus point, so it makes sense for the background to blur out, right? Correct. To do that, all we have to do is head up, grab an adjustment layer, and drag that adjustment layer down so it sits on only our clips before the shirt change. We'll then head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add a camera lens blur. Let's scrub to the point where our shirt comes out of the ring, set the blur amount to zero, hit the stopwatch, and check Repeat Edge Pixels. We'll then move forward to when the shirt is close to full size and crank it up to 2.5. That way, it appears the camera is racking focus on the shirt. And if we check out a preview, that is another shot and done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Ooh, time for a new shirt. Mm, that's much better. So that's my take on the reverse flash ring suit effect. Once you get that suit animation out of the way, it's really just my flash running effect with a few more lightnings thrown in there for good measure. But once again, that's my time guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, my subscribe button beckons your clicky arrow type thing. And as always, for previews of upcoming episodes, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. This is Vovan Krutan, and until next week, keep learning.